This animation is intended to illustrate how cascaded on-delay timers can be used for time-driven event routines. Cascaded timers are well suited to time-driven event routines, such as that of an elevator doors application. In this example, we'll use on-delay timers in a cascaded format to create a time-driven event routine that provides the functionality needed for an elevator door cycle. We will start by listing the requirements for the elevator doors routine. For the purpose of this demonstration, we will disregard the position of the elevator and consider it to always be at the appropriate floor. The first requirement is that we set a door cycle request flag when the call button is pressed. Once the flag has been set, we open the elevator doors for three seconds. Once the elevator doors have opened and the three seconds have passed, we need to wait 10 seconds with the doors open. Next, the elevator doors need to close for three seconds. The routine will also need a master timer that will time one complete cycle of the doors opening and closing. The last requirement for the cycle is that the request flag is reset or cleared once the doors are closed. We will now create a timeline by listing the events and the time at which they occur in the cycle. To begin the cycle, the call or request button is pressed. This should cause a request flag to be set. The master door cycle timer should start. The doors open timer should start, and the doors open motor should start and stop once the doors are opened. Three seconds after the request flag has been set, the doors open timer times out. The wait timer then begins. Thirteen seconds into the routine, the wait timer times out. The request flag must also be reset. The doors close timer starts and the doors close motor starts and stops once the doors have completely closed. 16 seconds after the start of the routine, the master timer should time out and the exit condition for the subroutine should be achieved. We'll now take a brief look at the I.O. mapping for the elevator environment. As previously stated, we're going to use the first floor call button as the request for the door cycle to begin. This call button is connected to input rack 1, bit 6. Two normally open limit switches are connected to input rack 3, bits 2 and 3, and are used to indicate when the doors are completely opened or completely closed. And lastly, the motor controls are connected to output rack 4, bits 2 and 3. We are now ready to move on and create the Ladder Logic Time Driven Event Program to run the Elevator Doors application. On the initial rung of the program, we're using the first floor normally open momentary contact call button to latch the door cycle request flag. On the next rung in the program, we add the door cycle master timer as well as the doors opening 3 second timer. Both of these timers start when the door cycle request flag is latched. Once the 3 second door open timer has timed out, its done bit is used to seal in the rung. This will allow the door cycle request flag to be unlatched at any time during the cycle without stopping the master timer. On the next rung, we are using the timer timing bit from the doors open timer to energize the coil associated with the doors open motor. The doors open motor contact remains active until the normally open limit switch, which indicates the doors are all the way open, breaks contact on the rung via the normally closed contact associated with the limit switch. The done bit of the doors open timer is also being used to start the wait timer, which will keep the doors open for a 10 second period. When the wait timer times out, its done bit is used to unlatch the door cycle request flag. On the next rung, the wait timer's done bit is also used to start the doors close timer once the 10 second waiting period has ended.
The timer timing bit for the door's close timer is used to energize the output coil that controls the door's close motor. The same technique used to stop the door's open motor is employed for the door's close motor. A normally open limit switch is combined with a normally closed contact to break continuity on the rung once the doors have completely closed. The last rung of the routine uses the master door cycle timer's done bit as the exit condition. Once the door's master cycle timer times out, program execution exits the routine. Timers T40, T41, and T42 are cascaded to create a time-driven event routine. This is accomplished by using the done bit of one timer to start the next timer in the cycle. Timer status bits are also used to trigger events during various parts of the cycle. As can be seen in this simple example, cascaded timers are ideally suited to time-driven event routines. Status bits, such as the done bit or the timer timing bit, can be utilized to cascade timers or trigger events within the routine. This general technique is equally effective with T-on and T-off delay timers alike, and is widely employed in time-driven event applications.